So what you're getting at here is the concept of irreducible complexity, presumably. That's one of the main concepts. In fact, it's in, uh, arguably the only real scientific, uh, scientific component of intelligent design. This idea that uh, uh, in a structure like, uh, like the bacteria flagellum, which has kind of become the poster child for intelligent design, You've got about 50 proteins, about 50 components of this structure. And the claim is if you take even one of them away, uh, you've got, uh, you don't have a flagellum that works anymore. The motor doesn't work, the bacterium just lies there in the water and, and it's, it's downhill from there. Uh, that's, just, that's just empirically wrong. Um, you can take away lots of proteins and still get a functional uh, flagellum, number one. Uh, there's no such thing as the bacteria flagellum. There are lots of different flagella. And there's bacteria flagella, there's eukaryotic cell uh, fl flagella, there's lots of structures like flagella in, in nature. There's not a flagellum, and the model doesn't really work when you look at the whole range of stuff. But in, in a sense, the idea of irreducible complexity is, is, is kind of true by definition. You know, if I took enough parts of you away, you'd stop working, okay? So it, it's not that, uh, that it's impossible to think of something that at some level is irreducibly complex. But the problem with intelligent design is that they, they, want to, they want to argue that there's a whole class of phenomena in nature that we just take off the table for science to explain. Now, what scientist wants to say, um, this is unsolvable? <clears throat> there, there's a lot of problems in nature, uh, there's a lot of problems that scientists have that we haven't yet explained. But not yet having explained something doesn't make some, something unexplainable. And that's the mistake that the, that the uh, uh, intelligent design folks make.